So the police custody basic in relation to who's in charge and who has ultimate liability and responsibility. So the custody sergeant, known as the custody officer, ultimately is in charge of the custody unit and is responsible for everything that occurs in the custody unit in relation to the safety, well-being and legal aspects of the detainee. Now you'll find in a custody unit you'll have the custody sergeant, detention officers and such as the healthcare professional all working together as part of a team but the decisions rest with the custody sergeant. For example you'll have the HCP, the healthcare professional who might give opinion in relation to fitness to detain but the decision for the person being fit to detain rests with the custody sergeant. The detention officer, they, they conduct activities on behalf of, of the custody sergeant, but that doesn't alleviate the custody sergeant's responsibility for the detention officer actually doing their role. Now here's an example to, to demonstrate this. We have a person who is detained in police custody and it's believed that they've got a level of intoxication through unknown drugs. The custody sergeant gets the HCP to assess the detainee. The HCP believes that the detainee is fit to detain and can be managed at police custody. So the custody sergeant instructs the detention officer in relation to the visits and observations protocol. Now the, 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 the custody sergeant does not go and, and conduct any of the visits. Some time later the detention officer points out to the custody sergeant that there is a deterioration in the health and well-being of the detainee. So the custody sergeant says to the detention officer let the HCP know for them going down and seeing them again. But the sergeant does not pursue this and ensure that it has been carried out quite quickly and in respects the detention officer is not quick to tell the HCP and when they do mention it to the HCP there's no sense of urgency and so the HCP doesn't end up going quickly to see the detainee. Next thing the detention officer finds that the detainee is in a medical emergency and CPR is commenced and ultimately the detainee dies in police custody. Now when we're looking then at liabilities and responsibilities, the HCP and the detention officer were used as prosecution witnesses against the investigation of the sergeant in relation to manslaughter. So if you are a custody sergeant, you need to get your head around the fact that you are liable and responsible for what goes on in the custody unit and therefore you need to focus your management in relation to what everyone else is doing as well. Now sometimes what I see happening is for example the custody sergeant's higher turnover than the detention officers. The custody sergeants come in, they're quite happy to let the detention officers carry on and, and act how they normally do and to run the show down in the cells. You as the custody sergeant are responsible for what the detention officers do down there and whether they're visiting correctly, whether they're rousing correctly. So if you're then engaged as, as the custody sergeant in other activities within your custody unit, you are then not in control of your detainees and their safety and well-being and the custody sergeant is ultimately responsible for the safety and well-being of the detained person. It's the custody sergeant's job to be impartial to any investigation and to act to advance the rights and entitlements of the detainee and that's a very quick summary in relation to who is in charge and the area of liability and responsibility. Thank you.